give the narcissist enough rope. There are many people who tell you how to deal with the narcissist and invariably they get it wrong repeatedly. They tell you that you can manage the narcissist. They can tell you that somehow you can fluff the narcissist. That you can pour sugar on the narcissist and accommodate the narcissist so that you have a meaningful and successful relationship. They're all wrong. As I've explained to you on many occasions, the whole point is this. We are designed not to be controlled. We are the controllers. And therefore, any activity that is perceived by us as a threat to our control, either unconsciously in the situation of an unaware narcissist, or consciously where you're dealing with an aware narcissist, means that we will then have to nullify that threat to control through the three assertions of control. If you want to understand those in greater detail, just go to the Knowledge Vault and obtain the material, the three assertions of control. This will be hugely advantageous for you to do so. No contact is, of course, the go-to mechanism. But too often, affected by your own emotional thinking, you ride into battle against the narcissist. If you come onto our battlefield, it's our rules. This isn't some kind of statement of grandiosity. It isn't some kind of invulnerability of the narcissist, because we do have vulnerabilities. No contact is the main one, as I've explained many times to you. But the point remains, we create the battlefield so that we succeed. We gain fuel from you. We cause an adverse consequence for you. We get the control that we crave in some shape or form. So that if you come into our battlefield, you're obliged to follow our rules. But there are no rules, because the rules change. They're invented, they're amended, they're deleted, they're reinstated. And even though I tell you all about us and the way that we function and operate, that doesn't mean that such knowledge suddenly equips you to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the narcissist. Not only will you not succeed, but you will suffer various downsides in attempting to do so. So anybody that tells you that you can defeat the narcissist by going in effect in hand-to-hand -hand combat really doesn't know what they're talking about. They're likely to be somebody that is well-intentioned but misunderstands narcissism, or more usually, the proponents of such suggestions are unaware mid-range narcissists who think that they are the victim. Talk about being the ninja Hayoka super-duper lightning empath that can somehow kick narcissist butt. You kick our butts through ignoring us. You kick our butts by having nothing to do with us, by staying away from us, by not opening the door to us, by changing our telephone number so we can't contact you. If you try and deal with us directly, you're entering into the lion's den. You're getting caught up in our web. And we are designed to succeed in those circumstances. It's our environment. No contact isn't our environment. It's yours. We hate it. One of the advantages that you do have when it comes to dealing with our kind is giving the narcissist enough rope. This doesn't apply to the greater or the ultra because of the level of awareness, intelligence and calculated behaviours means that the narcissist that is the greater or the ultra is thinking ahead, is anticipating the next moves and therefore won't engage in this kind of behaviour. So this technique isn't going to assist you if you have the misfortune to be involved with a greater narcissist, or if you happen to be involved with me, the ultra. The good news for you is that our kind that are greater and ultra are extremely rare, and more usually most people are involved with the lessers and the mid-rangers and the various sub-schools thereof. The advantage that you have is that the narcissist can't help but be the narcissist. The narcissist can't help but need to assert control in that moment, and where lesser or mid-range has no regard for collateral consequence. Yes, the mid-rangers have the restraint of the facade. The facade management aspect of their narcissism 
means that certain actions won't be taken, which preserves behaviours to an extent. But where there is a direct conflict between the necessity of asserting control and drawing fuel and the facade, the facade will always lose out. Often, the narcissist can accommodate both. The mid-range narcissist can preserve the facade whilst getting those prime aims. But there are instances where the facade cannot be maintained, but the need for control and fuel is absolute, and therefore the facade crumbles. You may have witnessed that. But beyond the maintenance of the facade, when it comes to lesser and mid-range narcissists, their narcissism is focused on the moment, control in the moment, fuel in the moment, character traits in the moment, residual benefits being acquired in the moment, although they might be delivered at a later stage. For example, making a decision to merchandise something now to receive the reward of it later. The narcissism is hugely effective at asserting control in the moment. It has to be. It's what it's designed for and, where appropriate, to draw fuel in the moment. And it doesn't care about the collateral consequences. It doesn't care about what comes next because when whatever is next comes along, the narcissism will deal with it. It will reject accountability. It will shift the blame and again and again and again. So when the narcissist does something in moment number one, which has a collateral consequence in moment two, when moment two arrives, the narcissism jumps in to prevent any accountability and moving the blame elsewhere, causing a collateral consequence perhaps with regard to moment three. And then of course when moment three arrives, the narcissism operates in those circumstances to again protect the narcissist by ensuring that there can be no accountability, no shifting of the blame onto the narcissist, but instead ensuring that it is focused elsewhere. And therefore, all of those behaviours occur in order to protect the narcissist by ensuring that the narcissist is kept in a position of never being accountable. However, one of the difficulties that arises from it is that if you give the narcissist enough rope, he or she will hang himself. In effect, the narcissist becomes hoisted by their own petard, which is medieval English for getting blown up by your own bomb. What happens is this, particularly with mid-range narcissists, they can't help themselves but need to assert control, which means they will do certain things, and they will keep on doing those certain things because they have no regard for the collateral consequence. The lessers will do so also, but they tend to be a little more abrupt, and they'll do something and perhaps just storm off. They will talk, but it is the mid-rangers that love the sounds of their own voices particularly. And they cannot shut up. They will go on and on and on. You will see it in a court situation. They'll be asked a question, and rather, reeling that brevet, rivi, rather than realising that brevity is the soul of wit, that of course if you keep your answers short, the attorney that's questioning you has less opportunity to use your words against you, they start to prattle on. I've seen it myself with opponents that are mid-range narcissists in court. I've seen it with the many people that have advised in the context of my consultations where they have been dealing with custody disputes, contract disputes, commercial disputes, divorce, etc. Where the narcissist is given an opportunity to talk, they will, and talk, and talk, and talk. And in so doing, they become, hung by their own circumstances. You see, if you're being smeared, the temptation is that you immediately go and confront the narcissist to counter that smear or that you run around telling everybody else what he's saying about me isn't true, he's the abuser, it's not me. And of course, doing all of those things takes time and effort and energy, and invariably, for reasons that I've explained elsewhere, doesn't meet with success. Indeed, if you go and confront the narcissist to say, stop telling lies about me, you threaten the narcissist's control, so all he will do is try and assert control even more over you. If you go and tell third parties about the narcissist's behaviour, word invariably reaches the ears of the narcissist, 
Thus, you threaten the narcissist's control, which necessitates a particular response to assert control over you once again. You, if act, kick the hornet's nest. But if you say nothing and turn the other cheek, hard as it is, because it, of course, it offends your truth seeker trait, which is being repeatedly tickled by your heightened emotional thinking to get you to go and tell everybody the truth of what we are and how we behave. If you resist that urge and just allow the narcissist to be the narcissist, the narcissist will piss other people off. The narcissist will make mistakes. The narcissist will irritate people, lash out at them. And you haven't been seen as the one that protests too much. You haven't fallen into the trap of being seen as six of one, half a dozen of the other, no smoke without fire, it takes two to tango, there's two sides to every story. By keeping your own counsel and letting the narcissist be the narcissist, you allow that narcissist to demonstrate their behaviour for their own sake, because the narcissist cannot help but doing so. Yes, though with those that continue to operate the facade. But with lesser narcissists, they do not. And rather than confronting them and being drawn into the maelstrom once again, with all of the downsides that that accords, you instead stand to one side and just let the narcissist get on with it. And they will fall foul of other people. They will show their true colours. And you haven't been involved in it. So not only does that mean that your no-contact regime is preserved, thus meaning you don't suffer the downsides and you lower your emotional thinking and all the other attendant benefits of which I tell you about, you're also not seen as shit-stirring yourself. You're not seen as being a gossip. You're not seen as perhaps contributing to the problem. You have remained respectful and noticeable silence. Meanwhile, the narcissist continues to be the narcissist and demonstrates what they are and brings it upon themselves. There'll be members of the family that know what the narcissist is. They don't necessarily realise they're a narcissist, but they know that they're problematic because they've had years of it. They have seen enough of the rope and therefore the narcissist has hanged themselves because that family member, perhaps a scapegoat, has realised there's something not right with my brother, my son, my mother. People at work will realise over time she's a difficult member of the department. Why? Because the behaviours have happened time and time again. You don't need to point them out. You don't need to tell other people how to think, because people don't like that. You allow the narcissist's behaviour to speak for itself. Accordingly, when it comes to a lesser or mid-range narcissist, Rather than breaching no contact and confronting the narcissist, rather than breaching no contact and scurrying around with some PR campaign trying to explain to everybody he, she does this, that and the other, stay in your position of no contact. Allow the narcissist to hang themselves, because that will invariably happen when you're dealing with a lesser and mid-range narcissist. Not only will you receive all the benefits that come with a total no contact regime, you will ultimately learn the satisfaction of other people coming to you and recognising of what you've been dealing with. And you can't be accused of smearing. You can't be accused of banging the drum about the narcissist's behaviour. They've seen it for themselves. People like to make their own minds up. They don't like to be told what to think. You, on your evangelical quest as a truth seeker, heightened by your emotional thinking, invariably attempts to persuade people it's understandable, but it's a huge mistake. It's entering an arena of interaction as a breach of no contact. It can indeed turn people against you because they see you as the problem, particularly where the narcissist is smearing in retaliation. Hard as it might be, maintaining a dignified silence and remaining in a position of no contact serves your interests far more effectively. And understand, where you're dealing with a lesser or mid-range narcissist, give it time and they will demonstrate their behaviours other people cause themselves complications. I've had a recent incidence of that with a family that I've been advising with a particular dispute. I've counselled them through many, many interactions. They've had to continue to interact with the narcissist because of a court order, but they've heeded my advice and ultimately it has caused the narcissist's behaviour to be noted by the relevant therapist that was dealing with reconciliation issues. She has seen him for what he is and has come down on the side of my clients. Why? Because they maintained no contact as far as they possibly could, followed my advice, and they allowed the narcissist to hang himself. I have many examples of this through the people that I advised in consultation. Utilise this weapon to your advantage. The lessers and the mid-range narcissists deserve 
nothing less. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.